Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. The Olympic Summer Games, the ones that do not involve hockey pucks, frostbite, or Tanya Harding, are about to begin, despite lingering coronavirus concerns in Japan. So it is time to brush up on the competitions that will confirm America's superiority as the land of the fleet and the home of the occasionally well-behaved. Track and field is a dominant theme of the Summer Olympics. A bunch of guys or a bunch of girls, all of them elite athletes, run at prescribed distance, and the one who gets to the finish line first wins. What could be simpler? The same for swimming. Plow through the water, kick at the wall at the other end of the pool, and come back. Repeat as necessary until all your opponents are coughing up water. It's called the Michael Phelps Maneuver. However, several of the field events might bewilder many Americans. This national confusion concerns me, as does our collective ignorance of geography. You need to understand that Tobago is not a hot sauce, and Eritrea is not a body part, nor is Bhutan an outdoor stove. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a country, not a rock band, and they will be bringing their A-game. So let me provide clarity about events which in the past may have prompted you to scratch your head and ask yourself, what doofus thought of this one? Take the javelin competition. The idea of the javelin is to throw the thing as far as you can. The javelin is amazing in its simplicity. It's nothing more than a big stick with a sharp point. A giant toothpick, really. In the hands of a skilled javelin thrower, the toothpick flies gracefully through the air and then jams itself into the ground. But in the hands of a novice, someone could die. The International Olympic Committee should come up with a new sport, javelin catching. Anybody can throw a javelin, but let's see somebody grab one of those bad boys out of the air. Now we're talking entertainment. Then there's the shot put. Basically, the rules require the contestant to pick up a bowling ball and heave it. Next is the hammer throw. Do I really need to explain? You grab a hammer, spin around, and throw it. It's not actually a hammer. It's a heavy weight at the end of a rope. It's called a hammer because nobody wants to be known as an Olympic champion of the heavy weight at the end of a rope competition. You might be surprised to discover that bicycling is an Olympic sport. At last, here is an activity that you yourself did as a child. But trust me, you do not have the bike or the thighs that these competitors do. At the Olympics, thighs matter. The marathon is one track and field event most of us are already familiar with, but perhaps you did not know that it was introduced by a Greek soldier named Pheidippides, who once ran all the way from Marathon to Athens, aided only by a favorable tailwind and two bottles of Aquafina. Eventually, this year's summer games will come to an end. The closing ceremony will go unwatched by millions, and NBC will rent several Nimitz-class aircraft carriers to get all its people and equipment home from Japan. Tokyo will be stuck with stadiums it no longer needs. But the danger of impaling Emperor Naruhito with a flying toothpick will have passed. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.